Well, I guess today the fancy fantasy fighters are getting some vindication. I actually found someone who pulls off seemingly crazy stuff against a resisting opponent. Let's take a look. A number of times I've poked fun at fictional sword fights for over-the-top moves, you know, spinning, twirling, jumping, etc. that I think wouldn't work in real life. Now, um, here is an event apparently called Glory of Warriors, which has some interesting moves in there. Unfortunately, I don't have any in-depth information about this because it's all in Chinese. I don't speak Chinese. I don't understand it. The only thing I could do was plug the video description into Google Translate, which has some wacky results. So the only thing I could get is it's called Glory of Warriors. And uh, there was some information about the weapons in there, which, yeah, wasn't uh, translated terribly well. The fighter in question is using a pair of these hook swords here. Uh, Auto translate called them crested chrome. Yeah, I don't know too much about them other than what I've been experimenting with. I've made a video about these with my non insider perspective on how these could be used in terms of design. So, really, the only thing I can gather from this is what you can see yourself. It is a competitive armed martial arts event in the ring. And let's just take a look at what happens. So, I said one of the fighters has a pair of hook swords the other one is using a two-handed sword and uh, i think these are synthetic they don't appear to be steel as far as i can tell and they have protective gear and as you can see they are going at full intensity full speed so that's always good to see and what I also like is compared to say M1 Medieval is that they're not relying on the armor. You know, what I've seen in a lot of events is that they, they're all geared up in armor and they just keep bashing each other uh, frantically flailing around basically, not really concerned with their own safety. These fighters are. And so it is, you know, hits are scored. So this is treated as unarmored fighting. And this, this is what immediately caught my eye when I saw this. I was like, what? Excuse me right now, you pulled this off? So let's, let's look at that again. Boom. So this is something that if I had seen it in a fictional fight, I would have been like, oh, come on, there's no way you're gonna pull this off. What he does is he strikes the weapon aside with his one hook sword, then he immediately strikes with the other. And the sword fighter does a great job. He basically disengages immediately and raises up the blade to be able to defend against that follow up, which he does. He does catch that. And then red spins. Now this, I don't know if this hit. The swordsman's cut might have hit him, but only with the tip. It's a bit hard to say. So then he does a spin and goes low into a stance that, I'm sorry, I cannot name. I've seen it before in Chinese martial arts, but I don't know what it's called. Um, anyway, so and then he strikes with the left hook sword to the arm, it looks like, and then the right to the torso. And it looks as if the other guy is like, what the f... <clears throat> Luffy, kittens, and butterflies. This is one of those cases that actually support an argument that I've seen people make about unconventional techniques having the advantage of surprise. You know, the opponent doesn't know what's, what's going on, suddenly, boom, it happens, and uh, you pull it off. Now, there's a few things that you need in order to pull it off. Now, one, one big thing is athleticism. This guy has it. You need to be able to, you need to have the balance, you need to have the, the body control and the flexibility to not only be able to get into such a low position, but also to get 
back out of it quickly. That's a bit of another problem. So this is where I would say this could go differently in real combat. This also applies to any kind of competitive sparring. This also applies to HEMA tournaments. In fact, there's, there's always a big debate about how you should treat after blows. If you don't know what that is, it means if you strike your opponent and your opponent within a certain time frame hits you back, then that's considered an after blow, which may either award the opponent who landed the after blow points or it may detract points from the attacker. So the idea is you want to discourage taking a hit because if you think about it in historical combat, if you manage to even mortally wound the opponent, if it's not immediately incapacitating and wouldn't just drop the opponent or, or prevent a follow-up attack, if they're able to, you're screwed. It doesn't matter that you know you maimed or killed them if you die yourself. So, and this can be really tricky. This is very difficult to really decide how you're gonna treat that in terms of rules because some people may just be chasing after points with those after blows. If they know that they can either uh, detract points from the opponent or, or get one themselves or whatever, they might just do this no matter what and just say, okay, whatever they do to me, if I get hit, I'm gonna immediately hit them. Now, ideally, as the attacker who just landed a hit, you should be able to defend yourself afterwards. And this is the problem I see here. He is very exposed. Like, he's basically striking a pose there from which, you know, he's not as able to defend himself because everything is super low. Like, both of his weapons are far, especially his offhand weapon is like pointing behind him the other one is also not covering him his head is completely exposed so if the guy with the sword simply cut down to his head he would be done now the question is would he be able to and i would argue yes because what happened here is he struck him first in in the left arm or shoulder is a little bit hard to say this, you know, with a hook sword, yeah, this would do quite a bit of damage. Would it render the arm completely unusable? Maybe, maybe not. Hard to say. But it's not incapacitating as such. Um, unless he drops the sword altogether, which I don't see as likely because he's, he still has the, the main hand on the sword. And then he strikes him in, in the torso which is a good hit and could do a lot of damage, again, with a hook sword. But would it just drop him? Would it just prevent him from acting? Probably not in a real fight. So he would probably still be able to cut at least with, with the right hand of that sword, you know? Maybe he would collapse shortly after, but he should probably still be able to deliver that one countercut. And if he cuts the other guy straight in the head, red is probably less likely to survive than blue is here. No, no, it's again, it's a bit hard to say in a real life situation, but that's that's a drawback of this. So it worked. But at what cost? And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to take anything away from what he just pulled off. That's awesome. That is really well done. Not gonna. <laughs> talk shit about it in any way just you know, especially in this context you know in this competitive environment the way it is yeah 100 percent full points there in real combat dangerous and what the sword fighter did here i don't like as much i have to say uh because i don't feel like this is really this is really adding anything, especially with the way he, he's throwing that cut. You know, the moment he turns his back, sometimes I overstate that point a little bit. The problem with spinning is you present your back to the opponent. It depends on what kind of weapon the opponent has and how close they are. If you do it quickly enough, the opponent may not be able to read that in time and react and strike you on the back in the middle of it. But there's still a problem here. 
he's striking while he's not even looking at him. So I'm pretty convinced that this is going to be garbage edge alignment. In fact, this looks pretty flat. So I doubt this would do a lot. And then at, look at this. Look at the long recovery afterwards. Like he is here. He is really exposed. The other guy played it safe and just wanted to protect himself. So he, got, he didn't get punished for it, but he could have. I don't think it was worth it, really. So here we've got a double. The sword fighter cuts him in the neck. This is kind of an unnecessary hit to take uh, because if he had kept his uh, his left hand hook sword in contact with a sword, he would have had it. He would have not been endangered at all. He could have uh, prevented that. Um, keep in mind, it's always easy to analyze a fight after the fact. I know very well how in the middle of it, it's... It's way harder than you might think just looking at it. Like, oh, wait, why didn't he do that? Why didn't he do this? Um, it's it's real fighting. It, it happens quickly. Sometimes you just, you know, shit happens, basically. But that's not the other spectacular thing I want to talk about. Yeah, uh, this, I don't really... See. In fact, this almost went really wrong. Because the thing is, he struck out of measure at a distance where he didn't even threaten the other guy. So if the sword fighter had just cut right at this moment, you know, as soon as he realizes that this is not threatening me, he should have immediately stepped in and, and cut. Or the other thing is, as soon as he turns, you know what's, what's coming. This telegraphs a lot. So if he had cut again into the arm of the other guy, it looks like he was defending instead. So this is unnecessarily risky, in my opinion. This is not a good example of spinning. In fact, this is a pretty good example of why maybe you shouldn't do it, or at least this way. Uh, the other one was a lot better because he was at the correct distance. Yeah, I do like that they're cautious, both of them. They're not just rushing in. They're really actively trying not to get hit which is not something you can say about a lot of armored fighting events. There it is. <laughs> so he legitimately pulled off a Dark Souls role, apparently. <laughs> Let's look at that again to see if it did him any good, actually. So now that's a good time to do that because he has control over the sword. You know, you can see the his left hook sword is binding the sword, so he, he can control it. He's, he knows he's safe at that moment, although he uh, leaves the bind a little bit too quickly. But uh, so he does that. Now, I don't know if he actually hit the other guy. I think he probably did. Now, it's it's obstructed by the rope there, but I'm pretty sure this strike here with his right um, with his right hook sword, that probably got the other guy's leg. You can see he tries to get away, but I think it probably hit him. So then he rolls over there. Now the, the sword fighter cuts. He's actually trying to get in there, but he launched himself far enough that he was you know, outside of range. And he gets up afterwards immediately and raises his weapons immediately that's good i i've honestly have no problem with that that is an example of the uh the dark souls role working and there's a point to be made about athleticism if you have the necessary strength flexibility and speed you can pull off things that somebody else couldn't and so if you're writing a story where the hero fights somebody who is more skilled, which is often done to raise the stakes and increase the tension, then there's going to be a point where probably the hero is going to have to do a high risk, high reward maneuver, something that the opponent doesn't necessarily expect, something that either works perfectly well or it fails catastrophically and gets you seriously hurt, which is 
you know, this kind of situation, especially the spins. They are also kind of high risk, high reward. The way it happened here, especially the first one that you saw, you know, the, the posture at the end is highly vulnerable to a counterattack. So there's the risk, but you know, it can also work against somebody who is otherwise better than you, but just doesn't really see it coming. The fitness aspect, I've often seen people in HEMA class kind of you know, groan or roll their eyes or drag their feet when it comes to conditioning. A lot of HEMA schools don't really focus that much on physical training, at least from what I've seen. And, uh, you know, if, if people are there just to have fun, which is often the case, you know, not everybody can be expected to be a dedicated athlete or, or should have to be whatever. If you're there for fun, then that's fine. No worries about that. But there's definitely a bit of a tendency where that can be neglected at times. I'm guilty of that myself, obviously. You know, injuries and other excuses aside, I could I could have done a better job and I could most definitely do a better job right now. So yeah, it's important. You know, I would definitely say, even though if you pit skill directly against fitness, you know, somebody who, who knows all the techniques and, and is, is good at them, etc., versus somebody who just has physical fitness, skill is going to win, no doubt about it. Um, and the weight is a little bit heavier on the skill side. It's more important, especially also considering that with high skill, you can um, make your movements more efficient and thereby save energy and effort, etc. But... Fitness is definitely important, should not be neglected. And I would also say that sometimes the way movements are practiced in HEMA can end up a little bit stiff. Uh, again, I'm speaking for myself here, definitely. Uh, there's, it's good to have an emphasis on making the movements as economical as possible, as efficient as possible, you know, reduce them compact them so you don't waste time, etc. But sometimes it can lead to a little bit of rigidity, you know? And I found that very noticeable when I had an opportunity to spar with Sword Sage, which was awesome, by the way. He definitely used some movements that I'm not really used to, like a lot of lateral movement, you know, dropping low. And that's not something that I normally do, and that worked out for him. However, it also led to the issues that I mentioned earlier, where you can end up being a little bit exposed. You know, dropping low like that can lead to taking a hit. And we've had at least two doubles where this basically happened. Like, he dropped low, he struck low, and I struck, and uh, or I deliver an after below something like that, and uh, he delivered a very good hit, but he still got hit himself, which is just not at all what you want in, in real combat. So there's definitely a risk to it, but at the same time, I don't think we should shun it altogether. I don't think we should just discard anything that seems too fanciful or whatever, as long as it's mechanically sound, as long as you can you know, test it against a resisting opponent and pull it off without endangering yourself unnecessarily, it's all good. Huh. Okay, that's interesting. So he turns it into a pole arm almost. I don't think I've seen that before, be, uh, the hook swords being used together like this, but that's a pretty neat idea. I like it. So it just shows the versatility of the weapon. Huh. And that works out a lot differently. The nice thing about it is it's got this guard here. That's helping him out here, out there, because uh, if he didn't have this, the sword fighter would have cut his hand right there. But he does, so he's safe. That blue tried to cut, but red uh, caught it. There's a strike to the head. There it is. Boom. And then, yeah, the afterblow landed on the blade, so he was safe. All right, so there are the two fighters without mask doing a quick demonstration. 
So, yeah, I'd really like to see that. This is quite interesting. And uh, I, I would really like to see more of that because it's... This is something that I have to remind myself of. It's way too easy to just overanalyze something in a bad way and just dismiss it when it's not the issue is not necessarily that this technique in and of itself is doomed to fail. It's just doomed to fail in the hands of somebody who is not skilled or fit enough to pull them off. There are techniques in historical European manuscripts that do look fanciful as well and you will absolutely fail at them if you haven't practiced them enough and uh, don't, don't have the skill to pull it off. Like for example, the Passata Soto is a good example. You find that in rapier manuals as well as with later thrusting swords. Uh, here's Lee Smith demonstrating that in one of my videos. So fire this way and this disengages. And from here, uh, I come underneath. Where his hand is. Oh, okay. Right? Now you're like, but you can hit him in the head. Yeah. Yeah, I can. So obviously if this misses, it's a very compromised position. You're very far extended, you're close to the ground, your legs are strongly bent. So it's going to take you a while to get back to a guard. There's a less exaggerated version, by the way, as shown by Capo Ferro, where you don't go all the way down and touch the ground, but just, you know, go to a very deep lunge and lean forward, which still is going to take a while to, to get back to the guard. This is not the most, this is not the quickest position from which to move. And then there's the inquartata, which if done right, looks like a total boss move and very fancy. Uh, but if it fails, then it's rather embarrassing. Here is Richard Marsden explaining it. I want my chest to face it. Normally don't, you want to be with profile. Because what I want to do is I want him to go for here. I want that. So what I do is watch what my back foot does. Hmm. So yeah, it looks really cool when you pull it off right. When you do it wrong, it looks like <laughs> shit. Which is, which is not good, because if you miss, your back's to him or whatever, or you're too slow. So not everything that looks fanciful is necessarily ineffective. It tends to be higher risk, but it can definitely be pulled off if done well and with sufficient skill. Uh, if done poorly, yeah, of course. You know, if you if you spin at the opponent when you aren't even at a range where you can threaten them, you're gonna have a rough time. Uh, or if you spin against somebody who has a very fast weapon, like a rapier or let alone a small sword, yeah, they might literally stab you in the back while you try that, unless you're really fast. But yeah, this is a good counter example. And um, let me know what you think down below. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.